I love compression. To me, it's one of the most powerful creative tools that we actually have available to us. And I've actually got a pretty advanced knowledge on how to use it. And actually, when I do my six day recording boot camps, we actually spend an entire day just working on understanding the nuances of compression because it's so, so powerful. But the funny thing is, the older I get, the more I appreciate the mighty LA2A or the electro optical style compressors. And um, so this one I've got here, um, this is a, a, friend, a friend of mine made this for me out of a kit. But the great thing about the ELOP or the LA-2A style compression is it's so simple and sounds so good on so much stuff. Um, the great thing, we'll ignore this, but the original design is this, just peak reduction. You just crank it clockwise to do more compression, counterclockwise to do less and then you just adjust the output level after the compressor. It's amazing, it's brilliant, and there's actually some pretty advanced audio wizardry going on inside in terms of how they actually do that. But it's so great, it's amazing. One of the best vocal compressions ever. They're great on bass, great on guitars, tons and tons of stuff. Some of the newer ones will actually give you some options here to adjust, um, you know, in, in a sense, sort of the ratio of the compression uh, and the speed of the attack and release. But in its traditional style, it's just this beautiful, crank this knob for the amount of compression, adjust your level outside of the compressor. Compressor, It's beautiful. And so, of course, I'm always looking around, um, I use the hardware units, of course, and some of the projects, like the one I'm right in the middle of now, we have to do almost all the processing in the box just because of different workflow issues and speed and turnaround and stuff. So I was kind of excited when uh, I got turned on early to a new optical or ELOP style plugin. The thing is, you know, there's already some pretty decent ones in there. What does this bring to the table? And uh, what came to the table was the new plugin um, emulation of the Acme um, ELOP style compressor. So let's check this out. So this is the Opticom uh, by Acme, the XLA3. And uh, you can see pretty obvious uh, that it doesn't look like an LA-2A, even though it is an uh, ELOP or electro optical style compressor. And that's actually pretty cool because there's already quite a few decent uh, uh, ELOP or LA-2A style compressors. Uh, this one here is actually modeled after a hardware unit. And in full disclosure, I've never used the hardware unit, so I have no idea whether it does a good job of emulating or not. But what I do know is it's actually a pretty cool thing. And with this project I'm working on where we have to do a lot of stuff digitally, but want it to have a vintage sound, uh, the color of this thing has actually become very useful for it. So here's a little rundown. Um, metering, you can just adjust this to meter input or output. Uh, gain reduction here kind of similar to what we'd see on an LA-2A, but here's where it gets different right out of the bat. It has an input gain into a fixed threshold. So you're actually pushing input into the compressor to draw more compression, just like you would if you ever, you ever used a distressor or an 1176. So not too uh, strange a concept, but not something you really find on an LA-2A at all. Uh, here we have response times, fast, normal, and slow, and they're actually going to adjust both the attack and release times. And then output gain to uh, adjust the final output out of the compressor. And uh, here, let's just do a quick run through. I'll show it to you here on a drum track. Yeah, so we're just getting more compression by pushing more level into a fixed compressor. But where this gets really interesting to me is actually the coloration. Um, you know, they say it can go from very LA-2A style compression to neutral to very thick and colored. And, um, you know, that's kind of true. Truth is, I actually, when I want something a little cleaner and punchier, um, I'll either use my hardware LA-2As or actually this Brainworks Opto, again, not exactly an LA-2A, but this is actually the one I lean on the most 
when I want something that sounds a little closer to an LA-2A and a little bit cleaner. But where this one is fun is the amount of saturation and coloring we can get. So not only can we push the input gain to drive it into saturation a little bit, but we can also get a pretty radical amount of change just by adjusting these uh, compressors here. So. so as with all compressors, the faster attack and release times you have, the more you're gonna start to get uh, distortion, coloration from the compressor. So here, check this out. I'll go from slow, normal, which is the medium, to fast. So do you hear it not only changing the sort of amount of like snare drum that cuts through, and by the way, this is a uh, just a single drum overhead, uh, great drummer Victor Bassetti playing drums on that. But listen how not only does the snare get tucked back, but also you start to hear a little more crunch and grit. So that's pretty fun. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to pull back the input gain on this. And you will notice that we'll draw less compression, but it'll also start to clean up. So just with those two settings, we've got a really, really wide range of tone and sound. Let's actually try this here on a vocal. This is Kathleen Blackwell and those of you who follow my sh shows know that she's one of my favorite clients to work with because we have so much creative fun. But let's uh, blast. This is a record we did several years ago. Oh, what you doing? Jump right in. You got me moving around that bend. Let's keep it brewing. Come on, boy. You got me cooing. So that's a room with a lot of uh, ambience and we didn't uh, deaden it or anything. But listen how when I go from this very fast attack to the slower, that it actually starts to clean up. Oh, what you doing? Jump right in. You got me moving around that bend. Let's keep it brewing. Come on, boy. You got me cooing. Trixie, trot to the magic spot. Come, ye kingdom of Camelot. Let's ride and ride till the... So that, again, that is a huge range just adjusting this and the amount of input gain. Again, this input gain is not just boosting level. It's emulating what I assume to be some of the characteristics of driving the input of, uh, of the Opticon, uh, Opticom, and you may just want that saturation. So they've actually done this one little thing here. We have the whole compressor in, take it out, or here, just use the amplifier section. So if you don't want compression, but you just want to get some of that saturation, check out what we can do. Oh, what you doing? Jump right in. You got me moving around that bend. Let's keep it brewing. Come on, boy. You got me cooing. Trixie, trot to the magic spot. Come ye kingdom of Camelot. Let's ride and ride. Here, that's starting to get gritty, a little more forward, a little aggressive. And then reduce the input gain and then match it a little bit here. What you doing? Jump right in. You got me moving around that bend. Let's keep really, really smooth right there. So combining these is so, so powerful, uh, which I love. And again, this recent project where vintage coloration was a big part of it, we ended up using massive, massive amounts uh, of this compressor on the project. There's a couple other things you might want to. Uh, check out uh, this pull knob, kind of frustrating figuring out how to do it. But if you hit the pull knob, it attenuates this 15 dB, and you have to double click it. <laughs> so it took me a while to figure that out. And the only way you can tell that it's something different is the shadow changes. Oh, what you doing? Jump right in. You got me moving around that bend. Let's keep it brewing. Come on. So I don't find myself using that too much. But here, um, you know, there's the trend of modeling the noise elements of a compressor and or vintage EQ, but giving the ability to turn it down. So, oh, what you so check this out. There's the hiss. Oh, what and you can completely kill it. Uh, I'm glad they did that just for people who want something that's authentic, but you know, I, I record enough cool, dirty sounds that most of the time I just turn these completely off. Uh, one nice thing too is, and I love when they put this into super, super colored uh, plugins, is we actually have a wet, dry mix right there. So 
we might want to go for something super, super saturated and crazy. Let's see what we can do here. Now let's do it on the drums. We'll actually hear that a little bit better on the drums. So if I want something really colored here, bypass. But sometimes when you over color or over saturate things, you can start to lose some important transient information. So what I'm gonna do here is actually sneak back in and just by clicking on this little uh, picture of a screw here and pull that back. So this is super cool because it lets you, in a sense, do parallel compression within in a single plugin. So you might have a situation where you want to apply this on, say, an entire drum bus uh, or guitar bus to color it and saturate it. But you know, to get that cool distortion, it can be over the top, and this is a great way to bring it back. And you can also do uh, trim the output there if you need to really dial in and level match stuff. So that's it. Again, this is the great thing about uh, LA-2A or electro-optical or thing style compression is really simple tools give you a lot of incredible power and uh, this again brings something additional to it. But let me just show you again why I love this box as a coloration box and why when I don't really want as much coloration I might lean to something else. But here I'll actually show you I've roughly level matched here, roughly matched the amount of compression here with three different optical style compressors. And what I've done is I've set them all. This is the, the Acme that we've been talking about. This is the Brainworks. And, uh, and this is the Bomb Factory. All of them set to serve their most aggressive setting, doing about the same amount of reduction and about the same output levels. I haven't scientifically matched this, but I think you'll really be able to hear the differences. So if you don't use Pro Tools, uh, grayed out means we're not using it. So let's go with the Opticom first. Brain works. Bomb factory. So again, you can see that just from the metering that these aren't exactly because they're both, uh, you know, ending up with different sort of end compression ratios. But without talking, I'll just run you through these. We'll start with the Bomb Factory and work towards the Acme. Yeah, so you can really hear big, big differences. And again, I don't want to give the impression that this Acme one is all about grit and dirt. We can actually scale that back to something much smoother and punchier. Actually, let me walk you through that. So this is where we started. See how much that changed? And now we're going to smooth it out a little bit by not driving it is hard, so we're going to get less gain reduction, but also less uh, saturation of the input control. Now we'll compare that back to the Brainworks. Hear how different they respond to transients? Again, and that's the reason why mixers and engineers use more than one compressor. And that is why having this Acme is a cool addition to the world of electro-optical style compressors rather than just doing another plugin that emulates an LA-2A. So that's it. Um, this is a pretty uh, wild thing. You may or may not, the tone may be for you, maybe not, but uh, the folks over at Plugin Alliance make this. 
and with all their stuff, you can try stuff out fully functioning for a couple weeks and see whether or not it's worth dropping your money on. Me personally, I am keeping this and uh, it's gonna become a big part of my mixing workflow.